in the past couple of years, every now and then someone's been freaking out on Facebook asking, where's Bloxy Blocks and when's Bloxy Blocks plugin dropping? Well, guess what? I got the answer for you, but it might not be the one you're hoping for. Anyways, let's go over the thing in this video. Now, if you don't know what is a Bloxy team, then it has been my go-to team for the last couple of years. It has a free version, the one you see on screen right now, as you see more than 100,000 active installations, and it has almost 800 five-star reviews. If you open up the reviews, you'll see that it's the best free offering I have seen. In my opinion, the best team for me, and so on. Awesome team. So it has a free version, but it also has a pro version. Pro version costs $69 per year for one site license. For 10 site license, it's $99 per year. For agency, that is unlimited sites, it's $149 per year. Those are the annual plans. But there is also a lifetime plan, which costs $199 for one site license, $299 for 10 site license, and $499 for unlimited sites. Those are the official prices, but if you take a look at the description of this video, then there is a nice 10% discount coupon for you. Just follow the link, use the coupon, and you'll get the discount. Now when the money talk is out of the way, let's go to the back end. I'm going to open up a project I have. It's a custom post type. I have advanced custom fields installed, and you'll see the fields here. Client name, release date, live site URL, and short description. Now let's take a look at the Bloxy blocks. If I open it up and scroll down, I'll see that there are 10 Gothenburg blocks over here. This is for the pro version. But if I open up the free version, then you'll see that there are eight blocks over there. Two blocks that are only for pro version are shop filters and content block. Later, I'm going to show you what they'll do for you. Now let's take a look at those blocks one by one. I'm going to add first here. And this is a breadcrumbs block. You can configure the margin, text color, link initial color, and link hover color. So if you would like to add breadcrumbs to your site with the help of the blocks, you can do it here. Next block we have is advanced post. I'm going to add it here. I can choose style from the customizer. I can inherit post styles from the customizer. That is, if I open up post types, for example, blog posts or custom post portfolio, then those styles I have created here will be used if I inherit from the customizer. I can choose pattern. If I open it up, you'll see all the post patterns here. For example, this one here, or this one. As you see, the preview is here. Now, if I would like to customize it, I'm going to just click on it, change the columns. I can also click on the every separate element, for example, this image, and set the aspect ratio for 16 and 9 for all those here, or original or square, whatever it is. Now I'm going to delete this for a second and add it once again, because as you see, there is a also great custom layout. If you click on it, then you can customize it as you like, choose post type, post image, whether to add pagination, add some styling, and so on and so forth. And this was the advanced post block. Next we have here is dynamic data. This one here. I'm going to add a dynamic data block just to demonstrate what you can do with it. So I can choose content source, whether it's post title, excerpt, post date, comments, terms, for example, categories or tags. I can add featured image, author avatar. If you're using WooCommerce and would like to use this block in WooCommerce single product pages, you can choose price, rating, stock status, SKU, and so on. This time I'm going to use advanced custom fields. I have added some fields down below here. Now I'm going to choose client name. As you see, it previews in a second. I can add before text and after text. Delete it, and you can also add a fallback text here. Let's duplicate this one here. And now I'm going to choose release date, add a label, duplicate once more. Now I'm going to add live site URL. And let's do it 
one last time and this time I'm going to choose short description. And now I need some spacing and therefore I'm going to add a spacer block between those here. Spacer block with 20 pixels. I'm going to duplicate it, duplicate it once more. Now I'm going to update, view the project. And as you see, those are the values from the custom fields over here. Really easy to use. Now let's take a look at another block. And this time it's advanced search. You can choose input height, for example, 80 pixels. If you click inside the box, you can add a placeholder, for example, search for products. Now I can choose the icon, the one that is displayed here whatever it is. I like the search icon more, so I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to enable live results, product price, stock status, and taxonomy filter. Taxonomy filter is a drop-down over here. Filter visibility, I'm going to disable it for mobile devices, but it's active for tablets and desktops. Search through criteria, I'm going to search only for the products. Here are the dimensions, border radius, for example, 50 pixels, input font color, focus color, border color, and so on. I'm going to update it and let's take a look at the search box. This one here, let's search for a lamp. And as you see, live results are here. And this one here is a taxonomy filter. Let's delete this block here and let's take a look at another block. This time it's about me. I'm going to leave the shop filters for later because I'm going to use it as a widget. But about me, it displays your avatar, your name, link to the profile and your social links. You can add social channels here if needed. Change icon size, icon shape, alignment, rearrange. Social icons, icon color, icon shape type, whether it's outlined or solid, and some text color styling. Next one is a contact info block. This one here. Just click and change the heading, some description. Here you can add contact information fields. By default, there is a address, phone, and mobile. You can rearrange them. You can clone them, delete them, open up, and change the information. And there are some other ones here. If you would like to add the links in a new tab, then activate this one. If you would like to add links to the icons, then activate this one. And here are some typography and color options for this block. And this was the contact info block. Now let's Take a look at the socials block. Nothing complicated here. Heading, icons. You can add additional icons here. Rearrange them. Configure the links to open up in a new tab or set links to no follow. Icon size, color, shape type, and some colors. Next one is share box. This one here. Heading, icons. Some platform for you to add for sharing, for example, email, Reddit, and so on. Icon sizes, colors, icon shape type, and color options. So these were the blocks that are available for both Bloxy free and pro versions. Next up, I'll show you two blocks that are exclusive only to the pro version. Oh, and by the way, if this video has been helpful for you, then don't forget to smash that like button down below here. It means a lot to me. And next one is content block. This is a pro block. I'm going to show you what it can do for you. But for now, I'm going to update this one and go to the Bloxy content blocks. I have made a separate video about the content blocks. So be sure to take a look at the description of this video. I'm going to put the link to this video. But basically, Bloxy has a built-in content block system. Let's give it a name. For example, my demo block. I can choose whether it's a custom content or hooks. 
I can create pop-ups with it and I can create custom templates. At the moment, I'm going to choose a custom content, create content block. Let's add a image here. I'm going to choose it from the library, for example, this image. I'm going to update. Here I can set the conditions where I would like this block to be displayed. I can choose a location. But since I'm going to add it to the post itself, then I'm not going to choose those. I'm going to go back to the pages, open up my demo page. Now I'm going to choose my demo block. I'm going to update it. If I open up the page, then this block is displayed here. And this is the content block. You can also go to the appearance and widgets and display those blocks here. For example, I'm going to open up the main sidebar. I'm going to add a content block here. Choose this my demo block, update it. And if I go to my blog page, then this block is added to the sidebar over here. And this is a content block. Now, since I'm already on my sidebar, I'm going to open up WooCommerce filter canvas and I'm going to add a shop filter block over here. If I click on it, then I can choose the dimensions. If I click on the shop filter controls, then I can choose what I would like to filter, whether it's category, attribute, or brand. This brand comes from the Bloxy team itself because Pro Bloxy Pro has a brand taxonomy built in. First, I'm going to choose category, display type, whether it's list or inline. I'm going to choose inline. Now I can choose whether to allow multiple selections. Yes, I do. I'm going to display checkboxes. If I don't do that, then those are just selectable, but I like checkboxes more. I'm going to display product counter, reset button, and if I would like to exclude some product categories, I can do it here, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Now I'm going to add another shop filter widget. This time I'm going to choose attributes, its color, checkboxes, it displays swatches, and those are once again from the Bloxy team itself. I'm going to display counter, reset button, display inline, and done. One other thing, let's change the heading filter by category or filter by color. This way I can add as many filters as I like. Now I'm going to update it, go back to the appearance and customize, open up WooCommerce product archives, activate filter canvas. I'm going to go to the shop page show and see what it is. This one here, it opens up as a canvas, but if I would like them to be always open, I'm going to choose type two, select filter area, always open panel columns two, filter by category, filter by color, publish. And now if I go to my shop page, You'll see those are the shop filters I added. Let's choose accessories, black, and done. I can reset and reset this one also. Awesome. I really like this built-in shop filter system they have here. Now, at the moment, it seems to me that for the colors, those checkboxes are unnecessary. So I'm going to open up this canvas once again. Check. Select attributes, disable checkboxes, update, refresh, and looks a bit better. Also, you'll see the active filters down below here. Awesome. And those were the Bloxy blocks, which are just a small part of the Bloxy version 2 updates. I made a separate video about Bloxy version 2, uh, where I go through all the things that make this team my favorite team. The video is up on the screen right now, so don't forget to check out that too. In the meantime, take care.